we now have tech websites that are supposed to report on uh, technology, the underpinnings, the inner workings, the back room of the stuff that we use every day. We have this both at Ars Technica with uh, John Brodkin and I believe it's, uh, yeah, John uh, Fingus or Fingas. And the article starts out at ours um, rather decently, and we're only just talking about um, the ability to take an iPad, pause a video, or have a photo or frame, and be able to zoom in on the frame. And yes, people do use this around the world every day. They, they do it on phones, they do it on tablets, they do it on large format touch displays. It's very common. The Judge Bruce Schroeder's ruling, you shall not pinch, that was not his ruling. Judge Schroeder's ruling was, if you can explain to the jury how the interpolation works when you zoom in or zoom out, on a native frame of data and you can explain it adequately to the court you can present it that's what he actually said so this is the um, first inkling of um, Brodkin's bias starting to leak into this article and the objection was that the iPad, the software, is going to take a guess. It's going to zoom in on the image, and to fill that in, it has got to make some sort of guess as to what's actually there. And it's going to fill in the blanks. And there is a problem with that. The issue we get into is these are lawyers, these are judges, these are not tech people, and uh, even, well, <laughs> Binger's done enough in the trial, but he's not correct on this. It's not like a magnifying glass. And here's the thing, the the judge gets this. Um, he, the, the R's form is, is terrible towards this guy. Um, it's, it's age-cism. It, it's it's um, racism. You know, he's white. It's, um, it's politicized. You know, you know he's a, he's a right-winger. He's, you know, a Trump supporter. This, that, the other. Just, just all these biases in. And the biases are so bad that it actually detracts from having just a logical conversation based on... The, the, the facts of the matter. So, um, Binger responds, you know, to the pushback from Judge Schroeder that, you know, everybody owns a smartphone and is zoomed in on photos and understands that doing so doesn't change the image in any fundamental way. And this, this is the problem is, um, Binger's an attorney. He, he, he's not a software developer with a specialty in um, image manipulation. And Binger continues this with his false equivalency of the pinch to zoom being uh, analog to a magnifying glass. Uh, when you take a magnifying glass and you hold it over a photo, you are not actually changing a photo. Nothing is added or deleted. Now, we all understand that there are issues with um, the optics and that the optics can actually add um, distortion, but that's not the same thing as something being added to the original fo photo that's not already there. And the judge gets this. He totally is actually within reason knowing more about what this is all about than many of the commenters, and I do believe the author of this article. 
So let's get up to the response by uh, the judge. And he puts this actually really well. Well, I don't know. When I put the magnifying glass up, it's enlarging the image, but it's not altering the image. 100% true. That image that's underneath the glass is still 100% the image. And he's even admitting that, you know, I'm a judge. I'm not uh, a technophile. And that he knows less than anyone in the room. And he's being self-effacing. And he is acknowledging that there is a legitimacy to the objection. And that, you know, when there's all these changes in technology, especially in the courtroom, that um, what he usually wants to do to admit the evidence is to make sure that the person pre presenting it, the finder of fact, is where that it's not the original image and the method by which it's been enhanced. Totally reasonable. And it's funny. So as a defense, you're saying, I get to present evidence. Remember, evidence is supposed to be as factual as it can possibly be when it's presented. And Binger's actually going and saying, hey, you know what, I'm going to present whatever shit I want to present, and it's up to the defense to knock it down. And that's not the case. And there is, um, there's another inherent problem with the um, Ars Technica position on all this, and let's get into that next. And I do want to point out, Binger is wrong. And the judge is right. Now, there was um, an expert witness that was um, testifying about video editing software and not expressly about um, zooming. But the judge does get it. Um, these are um, almost same birds of the same feather when it comes to video and image manipulation. And I think the judge knows that these are two different things. Where Binger says, hey, it's a different program. And the judge is like, I don't know what kind of a, I don't care what kind of program it is. The question is, is the image in its virginal state? All right. Let's get over to input ace. Can pinch to zoom alter video evidence? And I just want to point this out. While some people think it's ridiculous to say that zooming in alters the video, the issue is more nuanced and complicated. Authentication, or as the judge put it, virginal state, the question of what, whether the exhibit accurately represents original data is a legitimate legal debate with real legal consequences. Let's look at their example. One of the experts resized the image using bicubic interpolation, image on the left below, which added dozens of extra pixels and, pixels and rounded out the shape of the hand area, giving it the appearance of a gun in the individual's hand. That fabrication of shape is something done entirely by the interpolation algorithm. And the discussion does not offer a glimpse into how criminal trials are affected by a judge's unfamiliarity with technology. What this discussion in this article actually shows is that uh, Brodkin has simply overreached his actual grasp of technology and um, he doesn't know his ass from the hole in the ground. And I would really... Um, encourage ours management and uh, Condé Nast to probably put him somewhere else where he's not reporting on this stuff that requires uh, a fundamental understanding of technology. And it's it's not even lack of understanding of technology. It's a lack of research. It's, it's somebody that um, has a point of view. They wanted to push a narrative. And this shit writing is part of it. Just because a million people can tap on a phone and have it make a phone call or 
send out an email or play a game on it doesn't mean that they understand all the underpinnings. It's like a duck. A duck swimming on a nice, glassy, smooth lake. It's a, a really smooth going. But as soon as you go below the waterline, man, those feet are a paddling. And that's what people don't get about this is um, all that effort that's going underneath that, that serene um, surface. And if we go over here to uh, Fingus or Fingas, we've got another tech rider that obviously has an axe to grind. They see things a certain way and uh, damned if they are going to actually report on any facts. The judge, the judge may have, he did accept the argument. And the reason he denied the request for an adjournment and gave him 15 minutes is the prosecution has sucked from the beginning on this and they should have had this shit lined up and ready to go in the year that it took to get all the evidence together. And if the defense knows to object to that pinch to zoom right off the bat, you know the prosecution knows it. Their attorneys do. They've been at it for decades. They've got an entire office of people. So th this isn't new to them. They decided to roll the dice and, and they lost. And the defense did not play fast and loose with the truth. They knew exactly what was going on, and Input Ace totally backs that up. So um, in Gadget, ours, I really implore you to do better. Um, I want to be able to come to a tech website and get accurate information about the technology that we use, interact with, and that affects us every day. And you can and you need to do better. That's it. Thanks.